So you're not gonna be able to stop every single shot that comes your way, but you're gonna give yourself a chance to make a save on every shot with these three moves I'm gonna give you. This is Maria from GoalieTrainingPro.com. I'm an exercise physiologist who specializes in off-ice training for hockey players. Today we're going to focus on the three key ingredients every goalie needs to give themselves a chance to make a save on every single shot. So as we're shooting this video, the playoffs are on. I'm not sure when it's going to be uploaded, but if you watch Freddie Anderson in the Sunday afternoon game, the only reason that wasn't, you know, seven out of two, seven to two is because Freddie was using these three key ingredients. And you'll see almost any NHL goalie using them save after save. So the first ingredient is staying low in your legs. That's your engine, that's your speed booster. That's the only thing that gives you a chance when they get you moving side to side or up and down. Carson's gonna jump in to show us the difference between doing a powerful push from a tall stance. So a lot of you get standing up in your legs but bent forward at your waist. He's also gonna talk about, and this was his point, which is a great one. Some guys get so wide and they feel like they're low, but it's just because they're so wide in their skates. But still, there's no room to push from there either. So let's start with, uh, with just a forward bent posture and then you'll do a little T-push. Okay, now come back. Now do, um, do your new natural posture, do your natural stance and a T-push. Good, come back. And then do that wide stance to show sort of how you don't have power from there either. Good, perfect. So you can see in those three scenarios how the first one, you just don't have any power generated. It's also really hard on your back when you're folded forward like that. The second one, he's balanced. He gets a good quick push and a nice crisp stop. And in the third one, again, I'm way out here. I'm in a weak position. I have nowhere to go. So sticking with ingredient one, which is getting low in your legs. The other thing that does is it lets you get into your butterfly faster. I'm not going to talk about the Newton's laws of physics again, but <laughs> it is really the only way you can actually get in your butterfly faster is to start a little bit lower. So if he's in a tall stance because his knees aren't bent, and this is what every goalie does, especially if their legs get tired, he's got more distance to cover before he can seal the ice. If he's in his low stance, his, re his good knee bent position, and now he's in the butterfly go, he's down there nice and quick, ready to make the save. So goalie coach Eli Wilson uh, tells his goalies, keep your nose on the puck. And so when they're rotating around, their nose and their chest are going, but with a strong torso, that's what's going to bring your hips around too, so that everything's moving in the direction of the puck. So it's leading with the head and the shoulders, but if you don't have a strong torso or core strength, you're going to leave your hips behind. And then when you get to make that save, maybe you make that first save, but now you're off balance, you're a little bit over rotated one direction, your shoulders are here, your hips are still there, it's that much harder harder to recover. So Carson's going to try his best. It's hard for him because he's so refined, but he's going to try to show us an example of what it looks like when, yeah, you bring your head and shoulders around, but you're leaving your hips behind a little bit. Give it a try, Cars. So you can see his shoulders and head are here in the corner. His hips are still pointing about on this trajectory. So if he needs to come back this way, now he has to get all his momentum coming back around. So you need that strong torso and it's not the kind of strong core that you get by doing crunches. It's more a rotary power. It's more a connection between your ribs and your hips. That's really the reason you you could use a medicine ball on the ice. And I know you guys see the NHL goalies do it and they're using an 8 or a 12 pound medicine ball. That isn't really so much what builds the strength as it more exaggerates if you're lacking some of that strength or stability because the medicine ball is going to be wiggling around. What you should see, and we're just using a four pound medicine ball here today, but what you should see is that medicine ball stays right square in the middle 
of Carson's hips as he rotates and then his hips will come around as he pushes. He's going to go top of his crease back to his post for a couple reps showing us exactly what I mean. So his hands are staying steady, that ball's staying in the middle of his chest, just keep going Cars. It's not wiggling all over the place, it's not up and down. One more. Great job. So we're not going to talk at all about active hands or where your glove and blocker should be, that's, that's for you and your goalie coach to decide. But the third ingredient is having awareness and just being accustomed to knowing where your hands are and get that to feel second nature. So sometimes without realizing you're doing it, I do it all the time, but even Carson and I were talking, you know, sometimes, yeah, his glove is in or facing down a bit or your blocker is a little in line with your pad or behind your pad rather than being tucked in front of it. So we're going to work on that off the ice. It's something that it's just a habit and a skill. So we're going to look at some ideas in the gym how you can practice and practice. So how you practice off the ice is going to impact how you play on the ice. These are all habits that you can just go over and over. We talk about that 10,000 hours of practice. So this contributes to it. It's a huge advantage. You know, most of us don't just have access to a full hockey rink whenever we want it, but this is a way that we can still give ourselves the skills, the tools, and the habits that you need to excel on the ice. So again, let's take those three ingredients, let's head back into the gym and figure out exactly how you're going to work on those away from the rink. Back in here talking about the three ingredients that are at least going to give you a chance to make a save on every shot. Uh, and the first one was low in the legs. We talk about this all the time because it's so important. It's one of the foundational things that every effective goalie needs. So um, this is one of the drills and it's not even so much about strength, it's more about stamina so that you can hold that good low ready position really anytime the puck is, is in your zone or, or there's a threat of a shot. So this is one that we're going to start with and it's just a squat, jump and hold. You're going to do three squat jumps and it's really important that you jump as high as you can, as fast as you can. Now, if you haven't jumped since high school, and it's been a while since high school, don't start with this. Go easy. But <laughs> for those of you who are beyond, you know, ready to go, we're going to do big jumps here. One, two, three. And then I'm going to come right into a low squat, so way lower than my ready position. And I'm going to hold that for five seconds. Notice how my knees are over my ankles. I have a nice neutral back position. I'm not rounding my back. After five seconds, right into my jumps. Two three right back down into my holding pattern so i'm going to repeat that to start with three jumps five second hold three times i'm going to build up till i can do that five times and then you can consider adding either another jump on the front side or a couple extra seconds hold on the back side but that one will be a game changer it's building that stamina in your legs so that you can stay low in your legs and still be explosive if we want to get a little more dynamic and add in a little more of that frontal plane motion, then we can do a low shuffle into a split squat and hold. I have this medium uh, resistance band just to give me two things. It's going to give me a little bit lateral pull, so something that I have to kind of push against when I'm holding, but it's also going to give me a rotary pull so I have to stabilize with my torso. So I'm going to come out, quick out, then I'm going to get into my split squat position holding that for five seconds. Come back down, come back out, one, two. Again, my knees pointing straight ahead, nice and tall in my torso. You can also do it with your other foot forward. It feels a little awkward, it always feels to me like I'm taking an extra step, but I would do it each way. So I would do shuffle out, hold for three, uh, five seconds, come back. I would do two with my outside leg, and then two with my inside leg forward. And then again, build up till you're doing three, four, five. And don't forget, you have to face each direction. So if I start off doing my set this way, then I have to do another set facing that way. Ingredient number two was to be 
functionally strong in your torso or your core. And that's not the kind of strength you get by doing crunches. Crunches don't even give you six pack abs. That's pretty much all nutrition and what your percent body fat is. So like, I can't think of the last time I did crunches with a, with a client um, because it's a lot of wear and tear on your low back as well. Disc injuries are cumulative trauma injuries brought about by repeated lumbar flexion, which is exactly what a crunch is. You can start by building general strength, just using your plank variation. So, you know, your good, your good front plank, your nice side plank. And really, when I ask our athletes, if we do a side plank and hold for 60 seconds or 90 seconds, I ask them, where do you feel it? The bulk of them say, in my shoulder. My shoulder gets really tired. They feel it here as well, but it's mostly here. So what we do now, for the most part, is a side plank from our knees because we can hold it longer, get more good stimulus on our torso, on our obliques, without the same amount of overload on the shoulder. So th that's a great place to start covering the basics. Just make sure you're doing it properly. We see athletes who, oh, I hold the plank for two minutes, I hold the plank for seven minutes, but you know they're, they're here or they're here, or some other weird variation. And again, that's not teaching your muscles to work the way we want them to work. So once we have that foundation, we would work on that in the sort of early off-season phase to just build that stamina in the torso muscles. Then we'll go to things that are a little more functional and a little more functional for you. As we talked about on the ice, that rotary stability is really important or the ability to you know, bring your hips around underneath you as you lead with your head and shoulders. So we're gonna come into a standing position now. And this is just a yeah, medium heavy bungee. It doesn't have to be the heaviest bungee you can get your hands on. But we'll start just with a neutral width stance. And I'll bring that out in front of me and then back down. So as I bring it out, it's a much longer lever. It really wants to pull me around this way. And I have to control it and keep it in front of me. So that's rotary stabilization. I'm using my abdominal muscles. Even if I just put my hand here and push this out in front, I can feel those muscles really turn on to work. In the exercise that we did before with the lateral shuffle, we also were adding this same element of rotary stabilization. Then we're gonna take it to a different plane. So you guys are moving in all different patterns. You need that stabilization in different patterns and positions. So we'll just go into a nice wide stance. Don't let your bum get way behind you. So keep your hips underneath you. And then we can get a pal off press from there. So again, getting a little different pattern, tying in our adductors to what our abdominal obliques are doing. There are t tons of ways we can work on our core stabilizers the way a goalie needs to, but these are the ones that I would start with. You saw us using a medicine ball on the ice and explain the importance of not how much weight it was, but just keeping it stationary. Really, it's just a, a magnifier of instability. Uh, so that's the same thing off, off the ice, exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna hold this out from my torso. It should really stay stable right there. I can even lead with my chest and my shoulders as I go. That's totally fine, but this should stay centered off my chest. So if I do a knee recovery lateral push, knee recovery lateral push, that stays right centered on my body coming back down. So I don't want it to be you know, getting behind me as I push along, even watch my torso. When I work with you guys in the gym, I see when you push this way, your body goes that way. So working on staying tall, getting your body moving in the direction you wanna go. Staying strong in the middle. The third ingredient was keeping your hands ready. So Sometimes when we're on the ice and we're just practicing drills, we you know, can have a really nice hand position, glove and blocker. But then when a game happens or a scrimmage and we're thinking of so many other things, that we lose that. And that's because we're what's called 
consciously competent with our hands. So when, when we're thinking about it, we can do it, but then when we get distracted, we lose it. So the way to get subconsciously competent is to um, just practice it so much that it becomes a natural pattern. Again, like if you see a really great guitarist, they're not thinking, you know, E, A, G, they're just thinking, Broom, you know, <laughs> they can play it perfectly. So you can think about your glove hand and your blocker hand. And I know it looks a little bit hokey, like, oh, you're a goalie. But again, that's an important motor skill for you. So to think about keeping those that good pattern, go to any rink where a team is doing off ice training and you'll see, you know, the, the goalies of the whole team going through the ladder. <laughs> you know, and their arms are going. Well, that's, that's not what we need to do on the ice. We need to stay pretty calm in our upper body, think about where our glove and blocker should be. So we can go through a pattern like that. Sometimes we'll add a little resistance, not a heavy resistance. We're not, it's not that really so much, it depends a bit on your age, that the weight of the gloves is too much or the blocker. It's just that you lose the awareness. But using a weight kind of helps remind you a little bit more and does help build some of those muscles that help you stay in that position. So if these are just five pounds. Even this is a little bit heavy, like a two or two and a half would be better. But you can get your patterns there. And again, keeping those hands pretty still don't use them to start building your momentum. And you know, there's, there's a million patterns that you can do in the ladder, but that's just an idea. So when we work in the gym, we, you know, we're working on agility drills. We want them to keep their glove and blocker ready to go. How you practice off the ice is going to have an impact on how you practice or play on the ice. Hands down, no questions about it. But you have to focus. So. Too many of you just go through the motions. Oh, ladder drill, I'm gonna go as fast as I can. You're not thinking about the quality of movement. You're not thinking about the skill of speed. You're not thinking about, hey, am I engaging my abdominal muscles to help me you know, be stable, to help me transfer power I'm generating with my legs. So take these tools, but don't just look at it and be like, oh, that's cool exercise. Look at it like, okay, this is what I should be feeling. This is why I'm doing it. This is how it's gonna help me once I get on the ice. I guess I forgot to mention too that really the simplest, simplest thing, if you're just looking for, just give me the easiest thing you can do to stop more pucks and to have more of a chance to make a save on every shot is to work on your hip mobility so that you can cover more of the net. Not to force it, not you know trying to get the splits, but just getting your hips moving better, a little bit wider butterfly flare. I have a 14 day butterfly challenge. It's totally free. I'll post the link down in the, in the comment section and just pin it so it's really easy for you to find. But that's where you should, like that's a no brainer of where you should start. Uh, most of us need to work on all three of those ingredients, but if, there's, if you can only work on one, tell me in the comment section which one you would focus on or you need the most work on. That just helps me learn too what's most important to you. So when I'm creating these videos, it's, it's talking right to you and it's helping with exactly what you specifically want, not what I think you need. And if you found this helpful, gave you a little food for thought, maybe a new exercise you're gonna try out, give it a thumbs up, like it, share it. Uh, uh, comment below, uh, let, let me know if you like my new white t-shirt, <laughs> and I will catch you in the next video.